My first year in the league with New York, I was put on something called a kickoff team. Okay? It's called the kickoff team. And I was a wide receiver. Okay? That means I'm one of those guys who want to avoid getting hit. Okay? That's, I, I don't like getting hit, so I'm a wide receiver. I'm on the outside, they throw me the ball, I'm happy. Okay? But in order for me to get on the field... I was going to have to play a different role. That means I was going to have to be a flyer on the kickoff team. Now, let me explain what the role entails. As a flyer, I run down the field at the beginning of the game when the kickoff happens, and on the other end of the field, the opponents come together in what is called a wedge. Okay. They form a wedge, and let me describe what the wedge is made up of. It's usually guys who are around... I don't know, you know, uh, 260 to 280, you know, kind of too small to necessarily be a lineman, but too big to be a linebacker, uh, only have one purpose in mind, just to create painful experiences <laughs> for, for everybody else. And their job is to get connected and run right up the field and destroy what's ever in front of them. So my job is to actually run down there as fast as I can and split the wedge. So now before I actually stepped on the field, now you understand this, you know, I'm a rookie. And you all know, because we got some incredible rookies and some veterans in the room, you know how excited rookies can be before they've done anything, right? <laughs> so, so I'm all excited. And I run a field, I'm like, I got it, I can do it. I can do it. So coach puts me out there. So I get on the field, and in the first play, the kickoffs happen, and I'm flying. You guys had to see me. I mean, I'm, I haven't ran full speed in about nine years, but if, if I was, I was running full speed, and I saw the wedge right in front of me, and then all of a sudden, the reality hit me. I looked at this wedge, and I was like, oh, my goodness. Now, understand, my purpose and my job in split, in, uh, on this team was to split the wedge, to do my part. But you got to realize, I had to make a decision between self-preservation <laughs> or what was good for the entire team. So what I chose to do, because, you know, you, you, I, let me do it. I think it was Stephen Covey said, you know, you need to sometimes come up with win-win solutions. And now, I understand it was only a win-win solution in my mind because I didn't have this conversation with anybody else. But <laughs> in my mind, I found a win-win. First of all, I considered the environment. There's 22 people out here. Who really knows what's going on? I mean, people are running all over the place. Okay? I mean, no, I mean, it, it cannot, I mean, is that reality? I mean, think about it sometimes. I mean, it's not that you're not working, your coworkers aren't working, but you know, stuff can get so busy that people can look like they're doing something. <laughs> but who would know? <laughs> right? <laughs> okay. So, you know, that's how I felt. So when I'm running right at the wedge, and I see it right there, and there's where the pain point is. <laughs> but I decided to make a left. So I ran right out and went left. But then I still came back because I assumed that if I run to the left and avoid the wedge, then I can come from behind and tackle the guy then. Now, you got to understand, that's stinking on my feet, right? I mean, anybody else would consider that creative problem solving. So that's what I thought I was doing. So I ended up coming around the back end. I do make the tackle. Now, I didn't tackle him on the 20. He got tackled on the 45. But I tackled him. So I tackled him. I brought it down to the ground. Now, here's what's amazing. I come off the field. Now, I ran around the wedge. No one else knows. But I ran around the wedge made the tackle, came off the field, and I had my teammates telling me, high-fiving me, going, great job. Oh, saving tackle. Way to go, e -bulls. I was like, oh, man, yeah, that was definitely a win-win. <laughs> okay, I'm even getting complimented for this. Because you got to realize, no one actually knows the truth. Now, I believe there's one thing, just one thing, and you all can relate to this because you probably got, you, you have much more uh, controlled environments, but I believe this is the one thing that allows me or gives me the authority to speak as much as I do. I get to do this for a living, travel all over the world, speaking to all these companies, you know, like what can a football player, 
possibly tell all these business leaders, executives, because he played football. Yeah, yeah, it was football. But here's what football had that, unfortunately, not enough organizations have. That is video cameras. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. And they got cameras everywhere. Okay. So that means when you do something like I did, I was safe Sunday night. <laughs> Felt good walking into the building Monday morning until I had to walk into <laughs> our actual meeting room. And so you all are sitting here. Let me tell you exactly how it worked on that morning. Heck, um, uh, special teams coach sits here. The big screen lights behind me right now. He points at it. He plays the kickoff in slow motion. <laughs> and he says, everybody just simply watch number 18 right there. I got to highlight it. <laughs> well, as you can see, it's one thing to have a cowardly act. But it's another thing for your whole team to witness it. <laughs> okay. So he looks at me and says, if I could, I would send you home right now. Okay, so I thought my career was over and it just started, right? But here's what I want to make a point. It, it, I love this story. I don't mind sharing it. But because I didn't run through the wedge but ran around the wedge, let me tell you the price of that. It sounds simple, fun story, but let me tell you the price. See, we're in New York. And the New York media, then nobody cares about this kid, Eric Bowles, from, uh, you know, uh, Lakewood, Washington, right outside of Seattle. Nobody really cares about the fact that he's the one guy who decided to do something different outside of the rest of the team. What they did talk about is how the quarterback let him down, how the running back didn't get enough yards. Even though we lost that game by a field goal because, because we tackled him on the 45 and not the 20, they only had to go about 15, 20 yards to be in field goal range, and they win the game. That year, we didn't make the playoffs. So the price of my cowardly act, the price that fear cost me, didn't just cost me, it cost the whole team. And you would think somebody who's just a special teamer cannot possibly have that much significance. But the reality is, fear is expensive. And if you really wanted to step back and objectively evaluate it, what have your fears cost you? You'll realize that those, are, those fears are pretty expensive. 